Coming up, playoff positioning begins to take shape and other seasons come to a close. This is Locked On Game to Game, NHL. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game NHL. Local experts join us to go over the biggest stories on the ice and recap all of the action for you from last night in the NHL. I'm your host, Kainani Steven. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Boston's season has been full of many victories this year, and they tacked on one more to close out the regular season. Locked On Bruins goes over Game 82. Game 82 for the Boston Bruins ended in the same fashion that 64 of the previous 81 did resulting in a W. And of course, it was David Pasternak who scored the game-winning goal in Montreal, his 61st goal of the season to give the Bruins 65 wins heading into the postseason. This is Ian McLaren, host of Locked On Boston Bruins. And if there was cause for concern, similar to a previous game where Linus Allmark left for precautionary reasons, Patrice Bergeron exited this one after the first period. He said to be fine and that it was precautionary. Hopefully, everybody will be good to go for Game 1, which will take place against the Florida Panthers, who finish in the second wildcard spot. Catch all the latest on the Boston Bruins daily on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. The Devils head into the postseason after a comeback win over Washington last night. Locked On Capitals goes over their season finale for them, and Locked On Devils goes over last night's win. Capitals fall in the final game of the season by a score of 5-4. to Hi, this is Dan Holmey of Locked On Capitals. Well, the Capitals were in charge for the first two periods. At one point, they led the game by a score of 4-1. to And just kind of, just to summarize what the whole season was about, then they took their foot off the gas in the third period, and they let the Devils back into the game. The Devils scored twice over the final 20 minutes to erase a two-goal Capitals lead in force overtime and with just 26 seconds remaining in the extra frame 19 year old rookie Luke Hughes beat the Caps goaltender Darcy Kemper for the game winner on a wraparound his first NHL goal to give the Devils a 5-4 to four victory this puts to end the Capitals season for this year and uh, what we can concentrate now about is the future and what this Capitals team will look like next season I'll have more on this for you tomorrow on Locked On Capitals, your team every day. What's up? This is Trey Matthews of Locked On Devils, and here is my post-game reaction. So, the Devils were able to close out the regular season on a high note. So, Mackenzie Blackwood initially got the start at goalie, and unfortunately, the Devils fell into a 4-1 to deficit, and they decided to make a goalie swap, so Akira Schmid came into the rescue, and he saw 19 shots, and he was able to stop all 19 of them. So, the Devils were able to amount a miraculous comeback, tie the game, and send it into OT, and this is where our hero took the stage, because Luke Hughes was not only able to get his first career NHL goal, he scored the game-winning goal in overtime and who had the assist it was his brother jack and jack was able to reach 99 points during the regular season he'll get 100 points someday but for right now very happy for luke hughes and also shout out to dougie hamilton because dougie hamilton was able to score in this game and he has now tied the franchise record set by barry beck back in the late set 1970s for most goals in a single season by a defenseman so congratulations for dougie hamilton once again tying the franchise record and a miraculous season for Jack Hughes and Luke Hughes. His time is now. For the first time in a long time, Pittsburgh will not be taking part in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Locked on Penguins goes over some of the changes that will be coming to Pittsburgh. Well, thank God that's over, right? Hey everyone, I'm Hunter Hodes here at the Locked On Penguins podcast, back with with another Locked On Now video as the Pittsburgh Penguins season has finally come to an end. I am exhausted. I am literally and figuratively exhausted from this season. Uh, Penguins missed the playoffs for the first time since I was eight years old. I am 25 now. It was something I did not see coming this season, but it's going to lead to quite a few changes, and I think it's going to happen as early as Friday with this general manager and the president of hockey operations being dismissed by the Fenway Sports Group. This is not acceptable. They know it. The fans know it. People inside the organization know it. The media know it. 
there. This is going to be a very pivotal time in this franchise's history, and I really hope you keep it right here on Locked on Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Minnesota kind of goes out with a whimper uh, against Nashville. Locked on Wild says that they're looking ahead to the postseason, and Locked on Predators goes over the end of the season for them. The regular season ended on a flat note in Music City, but was anybody really listening? Hey, everybody. Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. As the Wild finish the regular season with a 4-3 to three overtime loss to the Predators. The Wild rested several key pieces, which led basically the third and fourth lines as the only solid lines that played in this one tonight. Freddie Goudreau scored twice. Also inked an extension during the game, and the Wild got a goal from Nick Patan, but in overtime, Yuso Parsonen scores a nifty goal past uh, Philip Gustafson to pick up the win, and the Wild, ironically, end the season with exactly 103 points, which is what they were projected to get at the start of the season, and now postseason time is here. For more on the Minnesota Wild, make sure you're following Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts. Nashville Predators fans probably saw the best goal of the season in tonight's overtime win over the Minnesota Wild. Hey everyone, Ann Kimmel from Locked on Predators. While the Predators are out of the postseason and the Wild rested many of their star players, both teams showed up at Bridgestone Arena tonight ready to play. Philip Gustafson really thwarted Nashville on some quality chances in extended zone time, but the Predators did score a shorthanded goal on a two-on-none chance Kiefer Sherwood chipped in another goal, but the score was tied 3-3 at the end of regulation. But oh my friends, that overtime game winner. Yuso Parsonen won the game on a filthy between-the-legs goal to give the Preds the 4-3 overtime win. It has been a tough week for the Preds, who were eliminated from the postseason. And tonight's game was a nice shot in the arm for a team that has battled hard down the stretch despite the odds. They are going to need a strong performance in their final game tomorrow night when they take on the reigning Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. Well, Florida is fortunately still heading to the playoffs after a loss yesterday, but now they get the pleasure of facing off against the Boston Bruins. Locked on Panthers goes over their regular season finale. What is up, guys? This is Armando Velez from the Locked on Florida Panthers podcast here from FLA Live Arena, where the Florida Panthers lose to the Carolina Hurricanes by a final score of 6-4 to four in game 82. The final score was not as close as, as it was as the Florida Panthers fell behind early in the first period the florida panthers were just allowing the carolina hurricanes in that inner slot area alex line not going to put the blame on him uh tonight for for the cats but the florida panthers made it close in the third period where there was two goals in the first two periods and then eight goals in the in the final frame two of them being empty netters by the carolina hurricanes the florida panthers were down five to three five to two at one point and then cut it to five four in in just a few minutes span and made it more interesting as the florida panthers were fighting for wild card one but with the loss for the cats the florida panthers are wild card two and will be facing the boston bruins in the first round the first time since 1996 and we rem- remember what happened in that 96 series with bill Lindsay scoring that game winning goal to help the florida panthers advance past the first round that helped them reach the stanley cup final in that year the year of the rat so let's my recap of this six to four for the panthers and uh carolina hurricane make sure it's in the episode of the panthers podcast your team every day Detroit's season is over. Losers of their last five locked on Red Wings is in for the final time this year. For one last time this season, let's do a locked on now for the Detroit Red Wings. They unfortunately finished the season with a five game losing streak, falling five to nothing in the finale to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Not a lot went right for this team. It was uh, it was a low energy game for both sides of the puck. Neither team had much to fight for. Lightning, the position was locked up. Red Wings weren't going to make the playoffs. Yet, despite that, plenty of shots made by the Detroit Red Wings. Not a lot were high danger. It is what it is. This is the end of the season. There's not a lot to be upset about. I think the most upsetting thing that happened tonight was the Capitals blowing a 4-1 to lead uh, and losing it over time, making sure the Red Wings do not slide up to the eighth overall 
uh, selection before the draft lottery, staying at nine. But it is what it is. The team finishes with 80 points on the season, six points better than they did last year, but falling to seventh in the Atlantic Division, one worse than they were last year as the entire division improved. Stay tuned for the whole game recap on Lockdown Red Wings. Colorado, one of the few teams with one more game to play. They will have their own fate in their hands today, and our Locked On hosts are crossing their fingers and toes. All right, so the division is in the Colorado Avalanche hands. They have one game left. They win that thing. Doesn't matter if it's in regulation or in overtime. They win the division, and they're in that position because of the 4-2 to two win that they just got against a decimated but a very game Winnipeg Jets team. Stop me if you heard this one before, Avalanche fans. Game 82. It comes yeah. down to game 82 for the division. And thanks to Miko Rantanen's 55th goal of the season, the Avalanche are in that position. So that is the good, the negative, why we're wearing backwards uh, shirts and jerseys right now, because uh, right before puck drop, we found out that Gabe Landeskog, who's been out all season, uh, and there's always an outside chance that he could come back at some point all along the way, and hopefully in the playoffs, that is not going to happen. They announced that he will not be back at any point during the playoffs. And we'll ha just have to wait and see if he can come back for next season, which is that not guaranteed at this point either, which is kind of odd, but it's just a wait and see approach. So you have the good and the bad with the avalanche. But the fact that this team is on the cusp of winning the division with the season they had of injuries, it's pretty amazing. Coming up, an emotional farewell in Chicago. This is Locked On Game to Game, NHL. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same thing with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay, guaranteed fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NHL. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you again for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. The end of an era for the Blackhawks as Jonathan Taves played his final game for Chicago. Locked On Blackhawks and Locked On Flyers are in postgame with more. A real tearjerker at the United Center tonight as the Blackhawks fall 5-4 to four in Jonathan Taves' last game with the franchise. What's up, everyone? This is Jack Bushman. Tonight, the Blackhawks dropped their season finale 5-4 to four in overtime against the Philadelphia Flyers, and there were lots of mixed emotions on the night, obviously with the tank going on right now, but also due to Taves' playing in his last game with the Blackhawks. And with that being the case, it was a full house at the United Center. Lots of cool video montages. Taze was mic'd up, doing interviews in the intermission. And he also scored a goal as well in the second period. Nearly had the overtime winner. Just wasn't meant to be. The Flyers seconds later go on and score on the other end, emerging victorious 5-4 to four in the last game of the season. For more coverage on Jonathan Taves' future and what he means to the Chicago Blackhawks, be sure to check out tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Chris Cohen here for the Lockdown Flyers podcast. Uh, Flyers win 5-4 in overtime. Uh, Ivan Provorov with the game winner. Travis Konechny gets a couple goals, 3 points, 60 points on the year. 30 goals. Owen Tippett gets his 27th goal. It was a bit of a slog, but it got exciting at the end in overtime. Jonathan Taves in his last game as a Blackhawk got a goal, had a breakaway, and Felix Sandstrom stopped him. And then Ivan Provorov won shortly after that. The game largely meant nothing, but, you know, Flyers get to walk off um, with a win at the end of the year. And that's it for the season. Listen to the podcast. A dramatic game against San Jose wrapped up the regular season slate for Edmonton. Lots for Locked On Oilers to go over with us post game. Club records, unexpected goal scorers, and heartbreak all on the final day of the season for the Edmonton Oilers as they beat the San Jose Sharks at Rogers Place. Hi, my name is Brett Holden from Locked On Oilers, and it was Matthias Janmark that paced the way for the Oilers on the goal sheet as he scores two of his own. His second two-goal game leads the Edmonton Oilers to a 5-2 victory over the 
the San Jose Sharks in the final game of the season. Seward Skinner gets his club record 29th win as a rookie goaltender as he passes Grant Fuhr from the most wins in Edmonton Oilers club history by a rookie goaltender. An Edmonton boy passing by a St. Albert boy. Connor McDavid unfortunately unable to get to that 65 goal mark as he reaches the 64 mark as he gets his 89th assist on the year. That is all he would get but his teammate Leon Dreisaitl a goal two assists, three points, including his 76th assist on the year. Now, the Edmonton Oilers go on to win this game, but so do the Vegas Golden Knights as they clinch top spot in the Pacific Division and Western Conference, meaning we have a rematch from the first round of last year's playoffs as the Edmonton Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings will face off again in the first round of of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. California rivals met on the ice last night as the Kings visited the Ducks in Anaheim. Locked on Kings and Ducks recap that final from the West Coast. The LA Kings close out the regular season with a win. Now it's on to the playoffs. Hi, I'm Eddie Garcia with the Locked on LA Kings podcast. Kings go into the postseason off a 5-3 win in Anaheim over the rival Ducks. Kings end the season with a 47-25-10 record for 104 points. In the game, Andre Kopitar gets his 28th goal of the season to once again finish as the Kings' leading scorer with 73 points. But the star of the game was Kings forward Adrian Kempe. Three goals for the hat trick and in the process hits the 40-goal mark for the first time in his career. Goalie Jonas Corposalo allowed three goals on 24 shots. He improves to 7-3-1 and one as a king in what is expected to be his final tune-up before starting Game 1 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Kings earn third place in the Pacific and will once again face the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs with a rematch of last year's series that went seven games. We'll have a full recap of the win over the Ducks and a look ahead to the playoffs on Friday's show. For more, check out Locked on LA Kings wherever you get your podcasts, your team every day. With the first selection in the 2023 NHL Entry Draft, the Anaheim Ducks are proud to select from the Regina Pats, Connor Bedard. Oh, sorry, just practicing. Hi everyone, Jason J.D. Hernandez here from Locked on Anaheim Ducks. As the Ducks secured the best odds to land Connor Bedard in the 2023 NHL Entry Draft with a 5-3 loss to the Los Angeles Kings. Adrian Kempe scored a hat-trick against the Ducks, and on this one, Trevor Zegras and Troy Terry each got goals. They both finished the season with 23 goals, tying the team lead. The Ducks also made a couple of dubious records. They have the NHL's all-time record for most shots allowed in a season, and also the most shots allowed per game this season. There's other bad numbers to look at, but the big, big number to look at is 24, as in the number of days until the NHL draft lottery takes place. Will the Ducks land the number one draft pick? And also, thanks to all the fans for tuning in to Locked on Anaheim Ducks this season. Uh, tune in for the next one for a breakdown on this game. And tune in next week for a complete breakdown on this historically bad Ducks season. Either the Canucks or the Coyotes will play in the postseason this year. So the season ended for both Vancouver and Arizona last night. Locked on Canucks goes over the final. Mercifully, log at last. The 2022-23 Vancouver Canucks season is over. And it ended with a 5-4 win over the Arizona Coyotes. And you know, we, we saw it as the season went on. But the Canucks, they are not very good at tanking. They are the kings of garbage time. The Canucks came into this evening with a chance of finishing as low as 25th overall or having the 8th highest odds of Connor Bedard. The night ends with them finishing 22nd overall in the NHL standings and having the 11th best shot at Bedard, a.k.a. the lowest shot among any of the lottery teams. Connor Garland did pick up a hat trick against his former team, including the overtime winner. Again, it, you could say that's a silver lining in a season that wasn't very promising for the Vancouver Canucks, but we appreciate you tuning in to Locked on NHL and go check out Kyle and I on Locked on Canucks. Big playoff stakes in Seattle as the Golden Knights fought for the number one seed in the West and prevailed over Seattle. Locked on Kraken breaks down the final and looks ahead. 
Hey there, hockey fans here live at Climate Pledge Arena. Just watched the final regular season game for the Seattle Kraken in their second ever season. Unfortunately, they fall to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Three to one, empty netter, really weird goal to get things started. It was Jaden Schwartz with the only goal for the Seattle Kraken. He also got one of the team awards. Matty Beneers was the fan favorite. Vince Dunn, the overall MVP. I thought it was an okay game for the Seattle Kraken. They had their fair share of shots. They led Vegas in shots uh, right before the end of the third period. Vegas hadn't even cracked 20 shots, but they had the goals and that's all that mattered. The Vegas Golden Knights with this win, they take the division, the conference, and the Seattle Kraken will either be playing Colorado or Dallas, but we have to wait until tomorrow to find out for sure. What we do know, Seattle Kraken fans, is there is more Seattle Kraken hockey. So, would have liked to see them get the win. Love that they got some opportunities, but the finish just wasn't there as the Seattle Kraken fall to the Vegas Golden Knights, three to one on Fan Appreciation Night. Erica El Ayala, your host of Locked on Kraken, reporting live from Climate Pledge Arena. That'll do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NHL. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Now that the Stanley Cup playoffs are here, make sure you're subscribed to Locked On NHL and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.